This movie is a good old-fashioned thriller. And what I think will really engage the audience is the characters. It's really a character piece. It's really an actors-driven uh, movie. The lead of Allie, played by Elizabeth Rome, I mean, I'm totally blown away by the performance she gives in this film. You know, here we are working in the most visual of mediums, the most visual of art forms, and she's playing someone who can't see. And that's sort of an interesting irony, and she does a great job of it. When the movie starts, she's sighted, and she's just like any other normal person. She's a mother, she's a wife, and she's a very successful artist. And once the story gets going and she has to kind of regroup as someone who's lost her sight and deal with that challenge, she's introduced to Jeff, played by Sam Page. And um, Jeff appears to be the all-American dream. He's handsome, he's charming, he's caring. But we'll see a different side of Jeff and of Sam Page in this movie. I'm extremely excited that we were able to get Shannon Elizabeth to agree to do this movie. You know, she's a big star from the American Pie films and, and a bunch of other stuff, and I've always been a big fan of hers. And she was just the perfect choice to play Linda. Linda is kind of the supporting, supporting role, but a very key character. She's someone who befriends Allie and sort of symbolizes that uh, Allie's independence, Allie's coming independence, as she no longer needs Jeff. So, um, and Shannon is doing a great job in this picture, and she really brings that sort of sweetness and that freshness that the movie needs, because it, it's, it's kind of a dark picture. Another one of my heroes is in this film. Uh, that's Richard Portnow, and I've been a big fan of his forever, you know, from the work that he's done in, in Seven and in Tin Men and the dozens and dozens of great films that he's been in. And he's exactly the right choice for our detective, Roy Archer, because uh, Roy Archer sort of puts the pieces of this puzzle together. And, um, you know, there's nobody better to do that than Detective Richard Portnow. So as we were putting the ensemble together, we really wanted to get the right person that would sort of walk that line and sort of be like a mother figure to our Ellie character and a kind of an auntie figure to our Jeff character. And it's Dr. Wynette, played by Elizabeth Pena, that fulfills that mission. And Elizabeth was just a dream to work with, and I was, you know, sort of a little bit intimidated working with her, you know, with the credits that she has and the type of director she worked with in the past. But um, she smiled and said we did okay. And she's really, really great, great in this picture, and I'm thrilled to have had the opportunity to work with her. So we're really blessed to have one of the greatest production teams I've ever worked with on this film. As I often say, this is not my, fir my first Korean barbecue. I've been in this business for 25 years. But the crew that we have together now is the finest I've ever worked with, uh, led by uh, my director of photography, Scott Peck, who has been my colleague on my last five pictures, and hopefully uh, many more to come. We've designed a really cool look for this movie, and it's, it's key. I mean, it's as key as the soundtrack and the performances. I mean. It's really a coming together of a bunch of artists that really are uh, believing in the same thing, and that is to make the best film we possibly can. We have our stunt driver doubling as your husband. Okay. On action, both the truck and you go. The fueler is gonna pass, so it's kind of a close miss, okay. right? And that, that reveals the reason for the short stop, which you couldn't see because the truck was blocking it, that van that's parked by the side that's of the road. So that's basically what we just did. Correct. No camera. Action. Action! Alejandra Lear is a vivacious, uh, unconventional, rebellious artist, mother, wife type, who has her freedom taken from her through this blindness. And I think it's been an interesting journey for me to play her fighting to get it back. Because I think it's always more interesting to play somebody who has a very strong spirit than somebody who's a victim. And I think from the very beginning, she's committed to getting her life back. And then there are moments when she feels the rug being pulled out from underneath her. But she's heroic. She's somebody who's had a tragedy really affect her life and wants to rise above it and be happy again which is really the human journey. Everybody has to overcome their personal tragedies and uh, like a phoenix rise from the ashes. So I think it's a human story and um, hopefully people will respond to her 
desire to be happy and vibrant again. As far as preparing to play Ally and specifically to play somebody blind, I think the best advice that I got along the way was to not play blind. So that was really good advice, starting from Richard, who's my fearless leader and a great, great director. I'll never forget the first day we spoke about the research and the lack of time and you know, I wanted to have someone on the set every day that I could talk to and he said, I've got it, I've got it, don't worry about it, I've got it covered. And I thought, I don't know, I don't know if I can be vulnerable enough here and really trust. And then we went to the Braille Institute together with Sam and that's exactly what several people that we spoke to said. Don't play the blindness. You know, it's these are small behaviorisms that indicate blindness and not to worry about that. Always coming from the inside out of the character and to not get tripped up in that. I've certainly seen Wait Until Dark. I loved spending time with Carmen who was my consultant. She came onto the set one day, but really in the end after the first day it became a very private dance between Richard and I and knowing that he had my back, he was watching the film and that I could just focus on the character and not worry about being blind. That's not the point. The point isn't that she's blind. The point is that she's a human being who's trying to survive and find a reason to live again. I have a mother who recently passed away. I think the losing of somebody that is an essential part of your existence is tragic no matter if it's your lover, your child, your mother. I mean obviously the child is a lot more painful and certainly when I think about what it would be like it's not um, something that leaves me you know whole. I think you're completely broken. I think human beings are incredibly resilient which is why I think it was interesting that you know Ali does end up going back to being an artist and helping others because I think in the end, we discover that as much as she loved her husband and her child, she also really loves her life and she loves being creative. And there are a lot of things worth living for, even if you have to survive a personal tragedy like the one she has to survive. Sassy. Marker. What are you doing? Uh, the character I play is Jeffrey McCauley. He comes on as Allie's sighted aide, is what they're referred to as. And he, his job is to help acclimate her to her new life as a blind person. What time is it, about four? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so what time is it? And he becomes increasingly possessive and then obsessive with her, goes a little overboard, too far with her, and she fights back. Action! It's, it's fun to play characters who are a little bit off because no one can really tell you you did it wrong. <laughs> um, but it, it is fun. You really have to map out your performance because they're, they're right, they're right, they're right, they're right, they're wrong, they're off, they're weird. They're, you know, you, you, you're going to map it out and create an interesting arc for the character. Action! I don't know, I just don't feel like it. And Jeff's only comfortable, really truly comfortable around blind people because they can't see him and he can just look at them and watch them. But I think I, that's more of a character choice that I've made with Jeff since he's kind of an introvert that only really feels comfortable around blind people. He grew up with his mother being blind and he was pretty much her sighted guide and now he does this to help out uh, Dr. Wynette, played by uh, Elizabeth Pena. She's not your typical conservative 
doctor. You know, she's really, uh, you know, a, a friend. She actually mothers her uh, patients. So I really was drawn to that. With her, I just really um, wanted to empathize, you know, with the, to me, not so much the blindness. It didn't take very long. It took me 30 seconds because I have children myself. And with the fact that one minute she has it all, that, you know, the Elizabeth character has, has it all, success, beauty, a fabulous husband, wonderful child, and in one split second, she loses it all. And then it's like, how do I relate to a very independent uh, woman that she needs guidance right now? It's, it's like a toddler learning to walk all over again. I play the role of Linda and she moves in across the street from Allie and she and Allie become friends and Jeff doesn't like that very much so um, he, he's not my biggest fan. <laughs> They've been really great to work with. They're a lot of fun and we have a lot of good times on and off camera and uh, they're both you know great professional amazing actors. Lock it up very quietly. My name is Richard Portnow. I'm playing Detective Roy Archer. Hello, how are you? So the last time you saw the disease was three nights ago. And came over for dinner. And neither of you are aware of any enemies that the deceased may have had ex-boyfriends. Hmm. Sam Page is such a dynamo. He is a triple threat. You know, he's really great with comedy. He is his timing is impeccable. I don't like Elizabeth though, at all. He's so simple and clean in his delivery. She doesn't shower much. He's a dramatic actor. I suspect she's not very good with... And he is gorgeous. Personal hygiene. You know, he's not lazy and... Luckily we don't have any kissing scenes. Thank God. I just saw the writer today. I thanked him for that. So it's really not a hard day at the office when I work with Sam. I'll be there. Just a sec. Good morning. Good morning. The thing that's stuck with me the most is how incredibly talented Elizabeth Rome is. She's just amazing. She makes my job, and I'm seeing it as everybody's job. She makes everybody's job so much easier. She's fully jumped into her role with both feet and immersed herself in it. And what comes out of her when, when, uh, when Richard says action is it's mesmerizing. She's, she's wonderful. I'm very lucky to be working with her. I think it's hard to play the part he's playing because I think you have to do it with such subtlety. It's like Ali in a way. I think both of these characters really have to be played with subtlety or it could become hokey. So I think Sam and I have a similar quality and I think it's complimentary because there's a tone to the way we are as people and actors that that matches. So it ends up being believable that he has this obsession and She's confused about their relationship because she's longing for intimacy. I love working with him. I, it's, it's funny, I, I, I gravitate to strong women in general. I have very strong women as friends, and my mother was a very strong woman, my daughter is a very strong woman, so I certainly like to portray strong female characters who have a passion for life and um, who are willing to get messy. You know, and that's really the point, I think, just uh, you know, having a good attitude and 
being in gratitude and you know um, doing things that scare you so you can keep stepping one foot in front of the other because change is good and you know feeling uh, sometimes off kilter is where you begin to discover your strength, your character. And characters in movies, I think, should be off kilter so they can discover theirs. And then the audience gets to go on that journey and discover their character through the actors. And that's, I think, why people love TV and film. The movie is really about the endurance of the human spirit. That no matter what tragedy is put before us, we're able to endure and somehow, you know, see the glasses half full and sort of rise above you know, anything that, that's put in our way. And um, you know, I try to do that in my life, and, and uh, even though it's kind of a dark and creepy movie, at the end we, we sort of want people to walk away feeling, hey, you know what? The human spirit is strong and it will endure. And I do have to warn you, there is an incredibly creepy shower scene. 